Hello, everybody. Look, I'm going to I'm gonna skip the formalities. If you were with us last week, and you should have been, then you know that we've been hanging out with a really, I'll call her a little sister in Christ. That's what I'll call her, because Yay. she's an awesome and talented British singer-songwriter who splits her time between Sheffield and Nashville, Nashville, and all around the world because she lives a very hectic life touring everywhere. And many of you here in England know Philippa Hanna. And since her first public performance with an acoustic guitar back in 2007, she has released five albums, a live DVD, two autobiographical books, including this one, which we're gonna actually talk about today. This is not autobiographical, but it really is kind of mm -hmm. autobiographical because for those of you who are Philippa fans, as I am, then you know that everything she does in her songwriting and in her book writing is really and truly autobiographical because she pulls from what she's lived to share with you so that what you're living through can hopefully become a little bit easier. Yeah. That's about right. I love that. I'm going to write that down. That, yeah, it's true. I do want to make people's lives easier and, and help them to feel better about things. And, and I'm going to call my next album Nashfield now. Nashville. Because I yes, like it. Nashville. Nashville. It's kind of a combination it's of Sheffield and exactly. Nashville. Yeah, I really, you know, I've been hoping and praying that uh, since the first time you came on the show, that Nashville would really open, because you were just beginning to think about, you were kind mm -hmm. of just going there. And now you're sort of a full-fledged member of the community? Well, uh, I'm definitely getting there. You're getting I'm, there. I'm writing a lot of songs in Nashville and it's nice to be able to hop on a plane and just sit in all these little rooms where people just, they literally pour out their heart and soul. It's the first thing they say is, what's going on in your life? You know, <sighs> tell me about what's happening. So it ends up being like therapy. Yeah. sessions yeah yeah i love it you said last week you know music is about telling a story mm. everything is about telling a story yeah i think that's powerful everything that's powerful mm -hmm. and it's how authentic and how real you will be in telling the story um do you think christians try to pretty up the story too much yeah and i don't think it's i don't think it's born out of a desire to be fake or not authentic i think it's pressure because mm -hmm. Because we, the fruit of the spirit, the fruits of the spirit, um, they are good. And so we become known for nice things like, you know, being patient and kind and loving and, and you know, being different. But then we feel the pressure to, to be the fruit rather than just be the children, I think. Wow, that's really good. I, I have to, this is a good segue to Christina Reynolds. And, and for those of you who kind of tune in regularly to the sessions, you know that Christina has joined us regularly and she's a a blessed addition and you know Christina just in, in, do you think that we pretty up the journey too much last night we were watching a film called Machine Gun Preacher which is uh, it was a Hollywood version of a true story about a man named Sam Childers who has an incredible ministry and has lived an incredible life uh, fighting in northern Uganda and in South Sudan rescuing children and Wow. Mostly women and children, you know, who are just, I mean, the, the country's war-torn, yeah. right? And, and one of the things Christine and I started talking about was, wow, this, is, this journey is so powerful uh, in God and about God because the story's not prettied up. Mm. He was rough, mm -hmm. you know? Do you think we pretty up the journey too much, Christina? Because you were really shocked at yeah. some points in the movie. Um, the whole way through. Yeah. It was pretty much, my heart was like torn apart. Um, I absolutely think so, but I agree with Philippa that there's this pressure to be perfect. But what I've found is that I get the most empowered, inspired, encouraged. And um, through seeing someone's brokenness and seeing God move through that, not through perfection or strength, because he actually doesn't even ask us of that. So I don't know where we get that from, but <laughs> yes, absolutely, I think. I we do that. I don't know where we get it from either because I can absolutely say I am not perfect. And I, I mean, I even, I remember when, back in the early days of the sessions when dinosaur roamed the earth. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's been a while, it's been a few years now. But I preached a session on the things God's still working on in me. I'm sorry to say he's probably still working on them. Oh, well, but, that's good. But you know, we'll check back in in another few years. But I think one of the most beautiful things about your music though, and your music, but any expression creatively is the ability to be real and mm. honest. So last week we ended with a song called You're Still God. Mm -hmm. That's really become an anthem 
you know, for me, because he, we do need to know that he's still God in all of the stuff that we go through. Mm -hmm. And you were saying that you wrote that from a very deep place. Yeah, from a difficult time, from a family point of view, from, you know, a church point of view, from every point of view, really. Actually, funnily, talking about the pressure to be perfect, I think we also, we project that onto other Christians. We expect yeah. them to be perfect. Yes. <laughs> and, and we don't necessarily expect them to be perfect, but we're surprised when they fall, or we're surprised when they disappoint us, and it can be very hurtful. Um, and so actually, the declaration that God is still God, that's, that's actually me focusing and saying, you know, I need to stop expecting perfection from other Christians. That, I'm not following them. Yeah. <laughs> Boy, that's a big one too, because I, I, I think that we as Christians tend to be very unforgiving with our Christian artists or what, what we feel is our thing. Um, you know, for example, I, I was talking to someone about Christian media recently and I said, you know, Christians will attack other Christian filmmakers or mm. writers or singers for, for maybe something that for them doesn't look like it should look to Got them. It. But yet they'll watch HBO all I day know. long. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they'll watch the secular shows all day long. And there's something, isn't there something wrong with that? Yeah, I think honestly, we have to be really careful about that because I think it can be a spiritual force really. Um, when we're looking for reasons to criticize someone, I've, I've even said it to myself, I've recognized it in myself that if I'm insecure about someone, I will look for fault in them. Mm. I'm just going to be honest. Um, I've recognized it and I've thought, Philippa, if this person was had, you know, been, there's no threat to you, would you find a reason to criticize what they're doing? Right. And I think if, if the answer is no, then y y your answer is clear. Yeah. That it's actually more about what we feel about ourselves and, you know, what we feel about that other person or that other ministry or... Yeah. It's a, uh, you know, it's good. insecurity is a monster. Yeah. It really is. And we all can be insecure. Oh I my I can. <laughs> goodness. It's, you know, something it's true. Did, how much of insecurity do you think is related to pride? Because the Lord's really mm -hmm. uh, been giving me a big download and I'll talk on, on some upcoming sessions about pride and how it's, it's like this octopus that really filters into so much. Mm. I think... It's true, uh, pride is a natural thing that occurs for, for everyone. And it's hard to avoid feeling that, that sense of pride. It, if we do feel like it's starting to affect us in any way, it's a good sign we need to just bring it to Jesus. And I think it's also really important not to give ourselves too hard of a time about it. Yeah. It's hard to admit that you feel jealous or insecure. No one wants to admit that. Right. Because it admits that you, you actually can be threatened. <laughs> right. Um, Which you can't be. But you think you can. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and that's the, because that's been the biggest thing for me. And that's why you're still God really struck mm. me because I, w I was in a moment of real insecurity and questioning, which I think when you submit to Jesus on some level, you always are because it's like, I have no control, God, of anything. I don't know what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I really would be a lot better if you told me what the plan was. Sometimes he doesn't because he needs to strip you and make you dependent. And just knowing like you're still God, I'm good enough because you're still God. Right, exactly. It's a powerful declaration of our identity in Christ. Yeah, I think it's so important just to declare who he is because it helps us to actually lay aside the battle of figuring out who we are. I think that's a, it's a lifelong battle. And yeah. um, it, I know it's been said a million times, but taking our eyes off of ourselves and our situations and looking at God and his goodness is yeah. always a good place to go when things are falling apart. And, um, and I also think it's one of the best ways to, to build muscle with your faith. My faith has grown so much as things have fallen apart because mm -hmm. it's caused me to have to look at Jesus and have to trust him. And yeah. it's one of those like, okay, it's, it's a do or die moment. Either we're going deeper here or we're, we're walking away. Oh my, yeah. And if we make that decision to go deeper, then I think that is course altering, life altering, faith building. Does, does this have anything to do with, because you did something last year that was just incredible and you, you released a song every day, uh, something every day on YouTube. Um, 
what what was what motivated that? What was the desire that you wanted? So I actually I only released a few songs um, across the year, but mostly it was just a, a thought for the day, similar to the stuff that you do. Um, probably nowhere near as as theologically inspiring as what you do. Oh. <laughs> more more to do with just you know my journey in faith and things I was learning and, pr and praying about. It came because I was sharing my thoughts on social media daily, right. you know, you know, praying, thinking, reflecting. Again, everything I ever put on social media, this is quite an exposing thing to admit, but it always comes from something I've experienced. Yeah, totally. So if I'm talking about jealousy, insecurity, anger, rage, fear, it's because I've been there. Exactly. Um, and I actually just thought I'd love to, to share this person to person yeah. on camera. So that's what I did, yeah. 365 videos. Madness. Ma ma yeah, didn't because, sleep last year. Yeah, no. I when what actually our mutual friend Anna when she told me what you were doing, I thought, oh gosh, I can barely get through a week with one post. Like I, it's yeah, a lot. Yeah, it's I know. Lot. But it is a bit like anything in that if you're doing volume of something, it is sometimes it actually easier. I found it harder to keep to a two video a week schedule than a seven video a week schedule because you just get out of the zone a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it's difficult and, you know, it wasn't for every year. Right. <laughs> Just for last year, I think. <laughs> but it did give birth to Amazing You. It did, yeah. <laughs> Which, you guys, this is an incredible daily devotional. I love that you call it 365 Devotions for Dreamers. For Dreamers, yeah. yeah. Um, because I feel like when I, I got saved in 2004, that's when I started my faith journey. That's what we mean if anyone's tuning in who's not a Christian. Yes. Um, I got saved. I started my faith journey and started to believe in Jesus and follow his teachings in 2004. And um, with that came this feeling of purpose, this sense of being on a brand new journey. Right. And I was so motivated. I was so full of faith. I was so full of ideas. But immediately things started to happen, which made that difficult. You know, discouragement, knockbacks, setbacks, things not happening that you thought were going to happen. Um, criticism, inner fear, insecurity, jealousy, all those things. Right. I found myself working through a lot of that. And, and so I, I kept a list of scriptures, a list of prayers, a list of reflections on all of those things. And it became a daily devotional. And, and what I realized is that we're all dreamers, yeah. you know, because basically to have faith for something, it's a dream. So whether that's, you know, just to see your family fulfilled and healthy and released into the life that God has for them, yeah. that's a dream. Or whether it's to stand on a platform and preach and see people get saved, it's a dream. So yeah. every day something's going to come against that and we have to be armed and ready to go. Yeah. I, I like, um, what, as I was flipping through it, I love the way that you share in this devotion because it's not like your normal, it's not like your normal thing, it's real. It, it's very reflective of who you are. For example, uh, one of the things that struck me, um, one of the headings, diet yourself beautiful. Uh, yes, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, talk to me about that because- Diet yourself I, beautiful. Because okay. I have dieted myself in so many ways. I'm not sure beautiful, beautiful is always the goal, but it's more diet yourself into feeling better, into yeah. feeling more mm -hmm. secure, into feeling more confident. No one likes to diet. No. Well, you see, it's a, it's a kind of a provocative heading because it's not about food diet. Exactly. It's about social media fasting and, yes. and just limiting your intake of the messaging that the world gives daily, hourly, yeah. which is all about selling stuff. You know, it's all about selling. Insecurity is how they make money, a lot of corporations, because you know, you need the skin cream, you need the new, yeah. you wanna be a different dress size and sell you a lifestyle, sell you a car, yeah. all of that. Yeah. So it's about, you know, if you actually limit your intake of beauty magazines and social media, if you unfollow some account that every time you open them, it's a girl in a bikini who's three sizes smaller or bigger or whatever it is you wanna be or wish you were in another life. Right. Um, I think if you limit that, you will start to appreciate more what you actually are and how you look and all of that. Yeah, you stop feeding yourself the stuff that makes you insecure and you start feeding yourself your real identity mm -hmm. and the things that actually encourage who you really are in your identity in Christ, yeah. all of a sudden you really are beautiful. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I feel like we, this is something that I've just recently thought to myself is that we so often, the, the, you know, the, the, the 
term woman crush, woman crush Wednesday, yes. when you yes. sort of think, oh, I just love the way Sandra Bullock looks or Jennifer Aniston and you have a woman crush because you wish you looked like that. And I thought how interesting it would be if we could teach ourselves to, to crush on future us. And, you know, oh. the beauty that God wants us to step into because so often we aspire to other people's beauty and their lifestyles, but we haven't stepped fully into our own, realized our own. Okay, so have you seen the film I Feel Pretty? Not yet. It's uh, on my watch list. It's on my watch oh, list. You, you, you have <laughs> to. Pretty, yeah. You know what, you guys? It, look, it's a little cute secular film, but if we're going to go all girly here for a moment, yeah. I'm going to go there. Let's do this. She, the character in the movie just... You know, she gets knocked on the head, and w what would happen to you if you got knocked on the head and you woke up tomorrow and you appreciated everything about yourself? Yeah. And you really felt pretty for the first time in your life. And she doesn't look any different. She's exactly the same person, but all of a sudden she sees herself differently. And I just love that concept because shouldn't our faith help us to see ourselves differently? I agree. <laughs> it should. And, and I really believe that it's possible as well. Um, and it's something that you can pray about. It's something you can ask God, God, help me to look in the mirror and, and see something compelling and interesting and beautiful. And you know, like, because social media, and it's different in different territories around the world as well, what is d considered beautiful. Yeah. Um, but you know, at the moment, there's a social media trend of, of lip fillers and a certain body shape and all of that. But it, it's a trend, you know? So, you know, for some people, why not look in the mirror and, and think, I love my thin lips. My thin lips are so interesting. I love, my, I love the way, you know, I'm straight up and down rather yeah. than curvy, because yeah. everything can be beautiful if you choose to see it that way. Oh my, and standards of beauty change so much. I mean, if yeah. you're watching and you're struggling with self-image in any way, then you really do need to pay attention, especially women. You know, because men struggle with self-image, but w women go through it, I think, so much more. And, and the comparing ourselves with each other and uh, instead of just mm. finding comfort where we are and with what we are. But it's so interesting to me because I, I, I think we spend most of our lives, well, I did. I, I was looking at pictures of myself in my early work life, in my, in my gosh, forget 20s, in my 30s, right? And, and and I always thought that I was fat. I always thought that I was overweight. I, by the way, I was 45 pounds thinner then. I was a, I was a rail. And, but I was always struggling with my self-image. I was always thinking I needed to lose more weight. And I literally sat there and I, I said to my brother's, uh, to my son's girlfriend, because um, we were watching an old show together and she was like, oh my gosh, look at you. And I said, do you know that I spent an entire decade picking myself apart. And now I look at old photos of myself mm -hmm. or old work footage and I think, why didn't you give that girl a break? Yeah. You know? Absolutely. Because it, we, but this is a tip, this is a thing that we've got to shed from our brains. I promise you, you'll look back at you today and you'll be like, oh my gosh, I'm so fly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're so right. That exact thing happens when I look back at photos and because, you know, I was skinnier before I got married and all of that and um, and just totally didn't appreciate it. So I guess the moral of the story is appreciate now. Yeah. Just appreciate what wherever you're at now. Yeah. Um, I mean, we all know that it's it's not about the packaging ultimately anyway. Packaging fades and so I did um I got a chance to open for the the Kingdom Choir, the Royal Wedding Choir from last year and I just recently played the Royal Albert Hall. It was sold out, mm -hmm. played half an hour of my own songs, my husband mm -hmm. next to me on Cajon. Um, and I felt, I felt beautiful, but not because of where my hair was done or what I was wearing, because I stood there and I didn't feel crippled by fear. I just felt so powerful. I was like, I, I've won, you know, because that is true success to me is not having lots and lots of fans or making lots and lots of money, it's, it's actually stepping into who I am and being at peace with that and, and enjoying it and yeah. thinking, you know, this is me. There's no one like me. It's not gonna get any better and there's nobody like you. Well, you know, I, I've got you sitting there with your guitar because I'm always, I'm always wanting to hear you sing and, and you know, I'm just sitting here thinking, Philippa standing in her truth and ministering to everyone who's watching, mm -hmm. you know, anyone around the world what for you would you give 
out of your musical? What, what, what really kind of hits your heart? Well, I sang, and I always try to sing the song, I Am Amazing. Yeah. Um, I sang that on the stage. I finished the Royal Albert Hall set with that. Um, again, it's, it's a very reflective song about my journey with self-esteem and learning to say those words, you yeah. know, learning to say them and declare them because it's God's truth. Yeah. It's God's truth about yeah. me. I'm amazing. I'm made in his image. Yeah. So um, maybe a few bars. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, maybe a few bars. Just in, just. Uh... I don't want to waste any more time in the mirror. Watching my face never change. I don't feel beautiful today. Any more hard and cash on these miracles that never change the way I feel don't make me beautiful today. Oh, how long can I hide away beneath this disguise? And what drastic measures do I have to take to realize? When I look at myself, wishing I could be anyone other than me. Cause I was created with everything I could ever need. So I'm not gonna change. I'm gonna stay just the way God made me. That's everything says everything that's what I mean like you you I try to do that in my work you know with this show when I'm sitting here talking to someone but you do that in your music and uh, the realness you know the pouring of your journey into other people has it has it does it surprise you sometimes that that God uses what you're going through so powerfully it amazes me and I think you know I was saying about true success and being who you are stepping into that and the, the also an amazing offshoot of that is when that impacts somebody else. That's God's power, that's his kingdom being built right before your eyes, yeah. that he can use something that was broken in you to fix something in someone else. It's absolute, it's mastery, it's like. He takes our mess and he makes a message. Yeah, you know? absolutely. Yeah, and I always say, you know, there's glory in your story and everybody has a story, you know. Um, Christina has a difficult journey uh, coming to Christ. You know, we've talked about her testimony before. And does it amaze you that to have seen God take your mess and make a message out of your life? Yes, every day. Actually, when people meet me now and they find out about who I was before, they're like, I, I don't even, they're like, I thought you were homeschooled. <laughs> I thought you were like a sheltered, like, you know. Yeah. And it's like, it, it is absolutely amazing. Even after watching that movie with you, just seeing how God can transform. Take anyone, you can't count anyone out. No. Oh. And I think, and that's what we're talking about, perfection on a stage, like, that's not helpful. And Philippa said that in the previous show. It's not helpful to put that standard on someone else, but to allow them to let God be strong for them, you know? So true. You, you did, you know, in your, in your journey last year with Every Day mm. on, on YouTube, you took an Ed Sheeran song. I did. Read, read, you Philippa eyes did, oh. <laughs> and it got over 40 million views. It did, yeah, <laughs> it's insane. Um, so I was honestly just thinking of something to do every day, and this song had always sounded more than just a love song to me. This mm. song, Perfect by Ed Sheeran. So, um, hi Ed, if you're watching. Yeah, <laughs> hi Ed. Please. Will you will don't you be give mad. us? Yeah, will you give us? Yeah. A, a, will you give us some? Well, what I wanted to do was it sounded like a hymn. It sounded like gospel to me. So, um, I, even though it's not my song, I thought it could kind of be my story. Yeah. I found a love for me. So I'm gonna dive right in and follow your lead. 
time. I hate that I can't keep you longer. I, 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 I'll have I, to come back next time you do the session. You please, you I always have you. an open chair, Thank sis, you. man. You always have an open chair. And I, I can't think of a perfect place to end, but there, because you guys, these shows, when I get to hang out with, with girls, sisters like this, it, it's really, because we all hope that those of you watching can connect in with one deep truth. We came as we were, and every day we come as we are. And so you're worth it. And whatever you're going through, you're perfect. And you have a father who sees you. And if you don't yet have that relationship in your life, then I just encourage you right now to just really simply just stop the madness and just say, God, Jesus, I want you. I want a relationship with you. I want to be known as Philippa comes off of this known tour, it's all about you being known. You have a father who knows you. So I'm Cynthia Garrett, and from Philippa Hannah, thank you. And Christina Reynolds over there, we just, we love you. We love you guys, and thanks for watching. And we'll see you next time on The Sessions. <laughs>